Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna to take a look at the Supermicro Sys 220GQ TNAR Plus. Now, this system is actually really cool because it is a NVIDIA Redstone platform, and what that practically means is that we get to take a look at a system that has four NVIDIA A100 GPUs. These GPUs can actually run at higher TDP and higher power because they are in an SXM4 form factor, but they also get NVLink between all of the different GPUs, which is a high-speed interconnect, so you can have GPU to GPU communication, and it all is really fast. Now we definitely have done reviews of a number of these Redstone systems on STH already, but this one was different. And the reason I wanted to look at this one is because it is not based on the AMD Epic platform. Instead, it's based on the third generation Intel Xeon Scalable codenamed Ice Lake. And that makes it a little bit different than some of the other options in the industry. And just for, just so you know, for some workloads, it is a little better to have the AMD and other workloads. Intel's a little better. So it is kind of cool that Supermicro has both, but I really wanted to go look at the Intel version specifically. Now we're doing this as part of a series where we got the keys to the Supermicro demo room. They said, just go for it. And so what I wanna do is why don't we get over to Supermicro and go take a look at this box. Before we get too far in this video, I do want to note something that is super important. We are marking this video as sponsored. And the reason for that is that I don't necessarily live 15 minutes away from Supermicro anymore. Instead, I live in Austin, Texas. And so both I flew out, Joe flew out. And so Supermicro is helping us cover the, you know, flight costs and travel costs and stuff like that to be able to go and actually do this. But they basically just gave me the keys to the demo room. And so they also gave us the keys to the demo room and let us use these boxes. But they basically said, hey, you know, go do your thing, go do whatever you want to go do. And they did not give me a script. This is all being done completely editorially independent, just like everything we do on STH. So I just want to be very clear that that's what's going on and that's why we're marking this as sponsored. With that, let's get over to Supermicro. And so the basic plan is we're going to start at the front of the system and we're going to move our way to the rear of the system and we're going to just talk about all the different parts and what makes this system tick. So let's get to it. And let's start with the front of the chassis. On the front of the system, we get a total of four SSD or hard drive, they're two and a half inch bays. Most likely you're gonna use these as probably SATA bays just because of, well, they're probably like more of like a boot SSD. Typically these servers do not have that much storage because the goal is really to have as much power and as much focus as you can on the GPUs. And so that's why that's like that. Now this might seem like a small detail, but there are actually a total of four fans on the system and they are absolutely crazy fan units because these four fan units have to cool this entire system, including these four GPUs, hot CPUs, and all of the networking that's in the back. And one of the cool features of these fans is actually that there are these little vent slats that go in these fan units. And so like, this is something that's different than a lot of the super micro systems that we've seen to date. And it's just kind of a cool little thing I saw while tearing apart the system. Okay, now behind the fans and the hard drive or SSD base, what we also get is the main part of the system or probably the biggest feature of the system. And that is, this is a NVIDIA Redstone based system. Now, if you don't know how NVIDIA GPUs are sold, at the kind of lower end, what you get is the PCIe GPUs that we've seen for years. Above the PCIe GPUs, you get the NVIDIA Redstone platform. And that's exactly what this is. This has four GPUs and you get additional power and cooling delivery to these GPUs. And that basically allows you to have more performance per GPU, which makes you basically better able to utilize your investment in these expensive GPUs. Something that I think is super cool on this is that there's actually a big giant latching mechanism that latches this NVIDIA Redstone board to the super micro system over here. And I just think this is super cool to look at and I've probably done it a couple times on the system already today. And I really like this. The other thing that you're gonna see is that we have these giant power cables and those are really kind of feeding all of the power to these GPUs because you can have at least 400 watts per GPU. You can have either 40 gig or 80 gig versions of the A100 GPUs. So this is definitely a big solution. It's also very popular in the high performance computing industry and markets because you basically don't have the NV switches that you have on the kind of HGPU and higher systems. And so it's just kind of an easier topology. It's a lower power topology and it's one that a lot of people like because of that. Now behind the GPUs, we get these processors. Now these are third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors, codenamed Ice Lake. And that means we get up to 40 cores in this generation, up from a total of 28 cores in the previous generation. We also get more memory channels. We go from six channel memory in the second generation up to eight channel memory in this new third generation. And that means that we also get to use DDR4-3200. And so overall, we get more memory bandwidth to feed the high speed processors as well as the GPUs. 
Something else that you could potentially do with this system is you could also have Intel Optane DC Persistent Memory 200 or PMEM 200 in this system, which gives you persistent memory that you can have a very high bandwidth uh, you know, memory interface to. And so that's something you can totally look at. We've done a lot with the Intel Optane DC Persistent Memory. We actually have an entire piece on that that we'll link in the description if you want to go check that out and learn a little bit more about it. But the other key feature that we have in these isolate processors is we also get PCIe Gen 4, which means we have a faster and higher bandwidth interface between the CPUs and the GPUs. That faster interface means that you can transfer data between the two faster, and that gives you more performance just from that. But since these CPUs in this generation get more PCIe lanes, we actually get 128 PCIe lanes in these two processors, but we only have four GPUs that only use 64 PCIe lanes. And what that practically means is that there's more lanes available for other devices, such as networking cards or other accelerators. And that really gets us to the rear of the system. Now on the rear of the system, we'll talk about those expansion slots and those PCIe lanes uh, just really briefly. You have a number of PCIe slots. These are low profile slots that can be configured in different ways in the system, depending on you know, what kind of devices that you need. But you could, in theory, have up to, I guess, six devices in the system. And these PCIe risers, are fully cabled. And that basically makes them really easy to go service. You don't need tools or anything like that to get in there. And so it makes them very easy to go work with and means that if you do have to go service the system, your expensive GPUs are not sitting idle for that long because you can more quickly go and add things and service things in the back of the system. That's definitely what you want in a high value system like this. Something else that you might not see just if you're looking at the system online or something like that, but what you can see if you're here is that if you pull out this PCIe riser uh, assembly, what you can actually see is that there are two M.2 slots that are below it, kind of at the bottom of the system. And why that's actually kind of interesting is that they're a little bit different from some of the ones that you may have seen on like a consumer motherboard or something like that. These actually sit at the edge of the motherboard itself. And then you basically plug in the M.2 board and then you secure it using a toolless assembly on the other end, but there's no motherboard underneath. It's actually just the drive. And so it's a way that Supermicro was able to actually add two M.2 slots for like boot media or something like that without having to actually extend the motherboard. Okay, and then moving to the back of the system, what you're gonna see is that we have a pretty standard block. It's a little bit different orientation from some of the other Supermicro systems that we've looked at, but it's still pretty standard features. We get a VGA connector, so a legacy VGA connector. We also get two USB 3 connectors. And those allow you to service the system in person and you can actually just go and you know, plug in a KVM card, you know, a keyboard video mouse cart, or you may have to go and plug in a USB drive or something like that. And you can totally do that using the ports that are on the back of the system if you actually have to go out and physically service it. Now, if you don't wanna go out and physically service it because that's always pretty expensive, what you can do is you can use remote management. This has a dedicated out-of-band management port that's connected to the BMC. So you can basically do all of those functions without having to physically touch the server. Of course, that always saves in your service costs. So it's something that's great. It's in the system, but it's also pretty standard on most servers these days. Something that is pretty interesting though is that we get two additional network ports. Now these are just look like standard RJ45 ports, but they're actually 10G based T ports. So we do get 10 gig networking on here. Now in a system like this, you're probably not going to rely on 10 gigabit or 10G based T networking. You're most likely going to put things like either InfiniBand cards or maybe 100 gig ethernet cards or something like that, maybe even DPUs in the system. But at the same time, I think that this is something that, you know, it is kind of nice that you do get that 10G based T just in a system of this value and stuff like that. It is kind of nice to get that little bump. This is also a system that is pretty interesting because you could use something like a NVIDIA Bluefield DPU in here and actually get some of the kind of more modern ways to go and manage the system. So that's not necessarily built into the system, but it is something that you could add using these expansion slots in the rear. Okay, and now let's talk about the big things, which are the power supplies. These things are three kilowatt 80 plus titanium units, which means that they're high efficiency, which you definitely want in a system that can use as much power as this system, but they're also just, just giant honking power supplies. One quick note, because they do use so much power, it also means that these are basically 200 plus, or say 200 to 240 volt power supply. So if you do have a kind of more like 120 volt rack or something like that, this is not the kind of system that you would use in that. You probably want to have a lower end system just because this does use a lot of power. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at this Supermicro NVIDIA Redstone platform. 
the fact that we get the HGX A100 with its four SXM4 GPUs that are you know, high power GPUs, high performance GPUs. We also get the third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors, codenamed Ice Lake, and all the technology that comes around with that new generation. I think this system is absolutely awesome and it is a definitely big step up from the previous generation. And hey, if you did like this video and you want to see more, well, why don't you give us a like, click subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.